Yo, yo, and yo, and welcome to WrestleBook Review. Today we'll be taking a look at two books, one by a former WWE superstar from Brooklyn, Brooklyn. That, of course, is in New York, New York. It's JTG Paul's Damn, Why Did I Write This Book? And then we're going back in time to a period when Vince McMahon decided to stop insulting our intelligence and got rid of that tired old formula of good guys versus bad guys. It's John Robinson's The WWE Attitude Era. Today on Wrestle Book Review. Thank you for joining me here on WrestleBook Review. My name is Keith, I am the Well-Read Machine, and this humble little podcast is devoted entirely to the discussion and review of professional wrestling books. The WrestleBook Review podcast is now a proud member of the OSW Podcast Network, available at PileDriverWrestling.net. Now, if you've never been to PileDriverWrestling.net, I encourage you to swing by. There's an amazing collection of free podcasts, and it doesn't run on diesel power, and it isn't inspired by the tears and prayers of millions of Hulkamaniacs. It works because it's a group of passionate individuals who enjoy providing quality content that's interesting, educational, enlightening, and most times funny. This is Episode 2, and I want to thank everyone who sent along a message after listening to Episode 1. I wasn't inundated with cards and letters, but it was nice to get a few responses for some people, so thanks very much. It means a lot. And you can follow me on Twitter at WrestleBookReview, that's R-E-V-U. Visit my website at WrestleBookReview.blogspot.com, or drop me an email at WrestleBookReview at gmail.com. And the first book on the old docket today is JTG, Jason Paul's Damn, Why Did I Write This Book? It was released in May of 2015 and published by the author himself. It is available as an ebook on Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon UK, a couple of the other Amazons, and is still available where it was originally released on Payhip.com. As is the case with a lot of self-published titles, the book didn't get a heck of a lot of press before it was released. However, it's become almost an underground cult hit due to things like social media and some post-release media appearances on podcasts. The book is currently sitting at number one on the Amazon.com bestseller list in the wrestling category. This is due to the quality of the writing, but it can also be attributed to the price. Damn Why Did I Write This Book is currently priced at only $2.50 US. Now, as I realize my little podcast has become a global phenomenon, you'll have to adjust your exchange rate accordingly. Jason Paul is best remembered for his tenure as JTG with the WWE as one half of Crime Time and then as a singles wrestler. And Damn Why Did I Write This Book is a chronicle of his time with the company. Now, while it does touch on in-ring action and storylines and angles slightly, the main focus of the book is his dealings backstage and how he frequently, either mistakenly or through his own fault or through the fault of those around him, ran afoul of the political system. He tells a number of stories that feature some current and past WWE employees. And while he does name some and and give us a few names, most names are left out. However, there are some very strong hints of who they are. Even a novice fan of pro wrestling from the past 10 years should be able to figure out who a few of them are. While the subject matter might make one suspect that JTG is writing from a, a bitter or angry perspective, the book is actually extremely, extremely funny. He deals with what seems to an outsider to be a ridiculous system of unwritten rules and regulations in a company in a very humorous and lighthearted way. And while he is criticizing the system, it's almost in a satirical way. JTG has a very unique perspective in that a lot of the people that were involved in the WWE in the last decade are still somewhat tight-lipped about the backstage dealings and the political structure of the WWE. JTG gives an honest and open account of a situation a lot of his peers might not be ready, willing, or able to be so open about. And I can't stress enough how funny the book is. The issues I had with the book may be moot to some readers, To me, I like a book to have a good balance between serious issues and humor. And while the humor is absolutely there, there's virtually nothing there with regards to the more serious issues of the professional wrestling industry. 
And while this is definitely by design, as Jason Paul obviously wanted to write a funny, light-hearted book, readers like myself may find that the lack of serious topics being covered hurts the book. In one instance, the author is telling a story that happens around the time of the Chris Benoit tragedy. And without giving any details away, basically he tells a story, and then says, and Chris Benoit died, and then goes on to his next funny story. Now, without a doubt, a lot has been written about the Chris Benoit incident, but it's still, even eight years later, a very hot topic. And mentioning the incident in passing without providing any more perspective or memories on the topic is almost an elephant in the room. Now, it's totally understandable that this would have changed the tone of the book. However, major topics like this do sort of require more than just one or two sentences used as a segue to get on to the rest of the narrative. The author also alludes to some beliefs he has regarding the formation of a wrestling union. It would have been nice to hear a bit more about this topic from him, and it probably could have been dealt with in a lighthearted manner. As is often the case with ebooks, oftentimes the software you're using to read them can change formatting a little bit. The copy I had had some issues with photographs. Some of the photographs in the book were of a lower resolution, and they almost had a washed out look to them and a slight pixelation and some captions were on the wrong page. That could be the fault of the reader I was using the resolution or uh, even the individual copy I had downloaded. The cover of the book looks like it could have been made in MS Paint, and while that could be part of a theme that the author was going for, I can very easily see this book being inadvertently passed up by wrestling fans as it's a stick man rather than a picture of the wrestler himself. Though in my mind the book is not a five-star book, it's hard to deny that it's a five-star buy. All in all, Jason J.T.G. Paul gives a very unique, interesting, funny, and educational perspective of the WWE backstage climate. For the price of a cup of coffee, you can get a very fun and entertaining read by someone I hope contributes more to professional wrestling literature. The book is well worth it. And book number two for today is John Robinson's The WWE Attitude Era. For the sake of framing the book, Robinson defines the Attitude Era as the period between King of the Ring 1996 and WrestleMania 17. And while a lot of fans would argue that the period actually extends a little further beyond the boundary set, this does make sense. Now, when most people think of the Attitude Era, they think Austin, Rock, DX, Undertaker, McMahon, Mick Foley. But the truth is that the real strength of the Attitude Era was the full depth of the roster as well as the fact that the on-screen characters and the in-ring action both complemented each other very well, and for the most part that the storylines were complete and well flushed out and were very entertaining to most fans. Whereas today we sometimes struggle to get through three hours of Raw, the Attitude Era was a point in time where we were, especially in the later period, watching two hours of Raw, two hours of Nitro, two hours of SmackDown, two hours of Thunder, at least two pay-per-views per month, and still had time left over to find ECW when we could. I had expected this book to be a lot like most WWE publications or productions where it's, as Jim Cornette would say, sanitized and pasteurized for your entertainment, and would give a very, very WWE-centric look at the whole period. While that is true to an extent, as this is a book that is about the WWE during the Attitude Era and not an industry-wide retrospective, I didn't find the towing of the WWE company line to be nearly as nauseating and disgusting as I have in other works. And while it would have been easy for Robinson to focus on the keystone moments and events from the Attitude Era, he does a very good job getting across the fact that it was indeed a very strong roster as a whole, and he highlights a lot of events that may have been otherwise overlooked. The real star of this book is the collection of pictures within. There are hundreds of full-color, glossy photographs that tell as compelling a story as the text. The photos both complement Robinson's text, but also compensate for some things that he may have included were it not for time and space restraints. Another thing worth noting is that Robinson does include both text and pictures concerning individuals that don't often appear in WWE productions and publications. People like China, Vince Russo, Chris Benoit, Owen Hart, and Jeff Jarrett are included, and while in some instances their roles within the Attitude Era are minimized, a complete omission of these people would have been noticeable and would have hurt the book. A few of Benoit's matches and China's role in the company were both highlighted more than I would have expected. The book would be a smart buy for a newer fan who knows nothing about the Attitude Era but would like a good solid look at the product from the time, or for a fan like myself who wants a quick and easy trip down memory lane. 
The book was published for the WWE by DK Publishing, and DK Publishing is known for books of similar styles on a number of different topics. The good thing about most of DK's publications is that you don't have to read them cover to cover every time. You can pick them up, read a couple of pages, put them down. And due to that and the quality of the photographs, this is a perfect wrestling coffee table book if there ever was one. Now if you're looking for a good in-depth expose of the backstage climate of the WWE Attitude Era, or you're looking for a broad spectrum of the wrestling industry at the time, this is not the book for you. But if you're looking for a good publication that's about a 6 or a 7 out of 10 on the WWE Kool-Aid meter, John Robinson's The WWE Attitude Era might be the book for you. And well, my friendly street people, this is all I have for Episode 2. Don't forget you can find me at WrestleBookReview on Twitter and at WrestleBookReview.blogspot.com or by email at WrestleBookReview at gmail.com. There are no major changes to any of the upcoming release dates as provided at the end of Episode 1 and on the website. I did learn recently that Brian Solomon's Pro Wrestling FAQ has only been released in Canada and the United States and will be available in most other countries in July. And the cover for Undertaker's 25 Years of Destruction has been released. It looks really cool. So other than that, I will bid you adieu. I am Keith, the Well-Read Machine, and thank you for listening to WrestleBook Review. Back when I was a kid, life was going swell till something happened, blew everything to hell. That night my daddy stumbled in, all pale and weak, set a woman up the block, just gave birth to a geek. Mom said, sell it to the circus. What the heck? Dad said, nope, this one's a pencil neck. And if there's one thing lower than a sideshow freak, it's a gritty, scum-sucking, pencil neck geek. You see, if you take a pencil that won't hold lead, it looks like a pipe cleaner attached to a head. Add a buggy whip body with a brain that leaks. You got yourself a grit eating pencil neck geek. Pencil neck geek, grit eating freak, scum sucking pee head with a lousy physique. He's a one man, no gut, losing streak. Nothing but a pencil neck geek. Soon the geeks were popping up all over town. You couldn't hardly sneeze without knocking one down. After a nice juicy steak, if you need a toothpick, just reach for a geek. They'll do the trick. One day we cut one up for fish bait. Learned our lesson just a little bit late. Soon as the geek hit the drink, the water turned red. Next day, sure enough, all the fish were dead. Pencil neck geek. Gritty freak, scum sucking pee head with a lousy physique. He's a one man, no good losing streak. Nothing but a pencil neck geek. Any night, you know where I can be found? Yeah, stomping some geeks head into the ground. So keep the faith, cause in Blassie you can trust. I won't give up till the last geek bites the dust. Pencil neck geek, gritty freak, scum sucking pee head with a lousy physique. He's a one man, no gut, losing streak. Nothing but a pencil neck geek. They say these geeks come a dime a dozen. I'm looking for the guy who's applying the dimes. It's gonna be real hard times for all of these grit eating, scum sucking, boot licking, drop kicking, gut grinding, nail biting, glue sniffing, scab picking, butt scratching, egg hatching, sleazy, smelly, pepper belly, dirty, lousy, rotten, stinking freaks. Nothing but a pencil neck geek. Pencil neck geek.